All right, I'm going to be painting a rhododendron inspired by a flower actually in our backyard and they're all blooming at the moment here um, in Tasmania. And I see them in lots of gardens as I'm driving around. So I felt really inspired to give that a crack. All right, so I'm choosing a really lovely deep pink color. I'm just testing it out on my cloth. I'm using a reusable bamboo cloth. You can see that clearly I haven't washed it quite yet. Um, I've still got some space left for blotting on here. So I'm going to keep using it for a little bit longer before I give it a wash. But it's really good to have something that I don't need to throw out. Um, and so, yes, I've got my deep reddish pink that I'm getting from my tray of paint. I'm using a, a tray of paint from in one of my watercolor kits. And the same goes for my brush that I'm using. I'm using a size four imitation sable brush from one of my kits. And I've got some watercolor paper and two jars of water, one for cool colors and one for warm colors. So I'm going to grab my pink, pinky red color on my brush and I'm actually going to dip it into my warm water to dilute it a little bit and get a bit more water onto the brush. And then I'm going to dab or drag the side of the brush on the edge of my jar to get some of the excess water off. So that was all to just dilute the paint on my brush. So I'm actually going to do it again just to show you. So I grab the paint on my brush, take it over to my water, give it a little swoosh and get the excess off. So now I'm going to make a start on my petals and I'm going to be painting with this really quite diluted pinky red and I'm doing so I'll show you a few times, don't worry. I'm doing some brush strokes that are quite wibbly or wobbly. So I'm putting the brush on the page and wiggling it as I move along and then lifting up to create a point. And then I'm going to grab some more of that same color and dab it into the edge of the petals using the really concentrated version of the color to use our wet in wet technique, which I'll link for you if you haven't watched that tutorial yet. But basically I'm dabbing wet paint into wet paint and letting the paint just flow and do its thing. So I'm hoping to get really lovely bright colors around the edge of the petals and then have more of a, a light pink in the middle, which it looks like I've succeeded here. It's actually gone a bit brighter than I anticipated, but that's okay. I might just drag my brush through to pick up some of the excess paint here, but it's looking pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to repeat that process. I grab my color, dab it in my water, get the excess off, and then I'm going to put another petal next to that first one, really wibbling, wobbling the brush on the page and slowly lifting up to create a point at the top. I'm grabbing a tiny bit more water and I'm going to repeat the process mirroring that first one. And my point ended up a little bit wonky, but that's absolutely fine. So now I'm going to dab in more paint around the edge again. It's quite a warm day here, so my paint is drying quite quickly. So if you're somewhere warm and you're wanting to do this wet in wet technique, you'll have to work fast enough that you get the paint on um, that you're dabbing in while that first layer of paint is still wet because if it starts to dry from the warm weather, it won't really work. So I'm actually re-wetting the petal a little bit, which isn't ideal, but honestly, you just gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> All right, so I'm popping another petal here, wiggling the brush along the page and slowly lifting up to create a tip and repeating that on the other side. And then grabbing my concentrated paint and dabbing that in on the edge. And I'm going to repeat that the whole way around the flower. Now you see that I've left a space in the middle of the flower, which is actually going to be where I'll be popping the stamen of the flower, but I'm going to leave that blank for now and let the flower dry and then come back in 
once that first layer of paint is completely dry and add some more details. But I'm actually going to add another flower on the page just on a slightly different angle, um, which I'll speed up the video of that, but I'm following the same process of using the wet paint um, on wet in wet technique on the petals to dab in the color. But I'll speed it up just so that you can watch me painting the flower on another angle. While I'm waiting for this first flower to dry, I'm actually going to add in a little leaf. And I didn't practice this, so I'm being a little bit impromptu. Let's hope for the best. Um, I'm just going to pop in a leaf or two coming out from behind the flower, but I'm going to be really careful not to actually touch the flower with my green paint. Otherwise, it will bleed into the pink and it will kind of muck up the flower a little bit. So I'm going to be really careful. And I'm just using my leaf brush stroke that I often will use and it's in my brush strokes tutorial as well. Again, if you haven't watched it, go back and give it a watch because it'll be so helpful for you. But I'll go through the leaf again in a second. But basically I'm using that same technique as before, using a really wet brush and using some quite diluted paint and then you'll see that I dabbed in some more paint. And let's see, I'll add a little bit of width to this leaf, I think, just to make it a little more, um, slightly more realistic, but obviously, as I said before, we're not going for a particularly realistic look. I'm not sure how I feel about this leaf, but it's on there, so <laughs> we're going to roll with it. I'll pop in another one as well, and we'll see what happens. I am regretting that a little bit, but <laughs> it's absolutely fine. I think that maybe I should have practiced that a little bit first. Um, and I always do like to practice on a piece of scrap watercolor paper before filming these tutorials, but today I was like, oh, I'll just wing it. Um, and yes, anyway, it's still really cool. You can add a leaf if you like to, but maybe have a look at an actual picture of a rhododendron before just winging it like I did. So anyway, it's still great. Um, I'm grabbing some really concentrated paint on my brush now, going back to that pinkish red, and I'm going to add some dots on the leaves, just really, uh, petals, sorry, really loosely, and it looks like the petals are actually still wet. So I'm not getting really crisp dots, they're actually bleeding a little bit, which wasn't planned, but it actually looks quite cool. On some of the other petals over here, they are actually a bit more dry, so the dots are working a little bit more how I planned, but I actually quite like the look where it's bled a bit. Um, maybe I even like it more, so there you go. Anyway, I'll add my stamen now. So I'm going to think about where the stamen is going to be facing. So for these flowers, it's like they have a long line with a dot at the end and they all kind of, I think, go in a similar sort of direction. So I might have mine coming upwards. So I'll put my dots here and I'm popping the dots on there first and then using the very tip of the brush, I'm going to create the curved lines really loose leading back into the middle of the flower. There we go. And as I said, these petals over here are still a bit wet, so I'm not getting a really crisp line like I would have liked, but also do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> so this other flower that I have going sort of facing over here, I'm going to do the same thing, add some dots of paint onto the petals really, really loosely. I prefer a messy look where I move the brush really quickly and I'm just sort of barely touching the paper just to get a slightly more interesting and imperfect look. Um, and I'm going to grab some more of the paint and do my dots out here this time for the stamen. And you'll see they look really crisp because they're on dry paper. And then I'll 
have these lines going back in to the flower. And I do feel like some leaves would make it look a bit more complete, I guess, but these flowers often are in clusters on the trees rather than sitting individually as I've painted them here. Um, but you get the idea of the shape of the flower. And I might actually have a look at a picture of, oh, I might even go out into my backyard and have a look at one of these rhododendrons and actually add in some leaves that are a little bit more planned and thought out. All right, so I'm actually going to mix up in the lid of my uh, paints. I'm actually going to mix up a slightly darker green because I think that um, just for the purpose of this painting, I think that a darker green will actually look a little better than this really, really bright green. So I'm just going to add in a tiny touch of that red, reddish pink to my green. I might actually have to add a teeny bit more just to make it a little bit warmer and darker. And then I'm going to add in some petal, uh, some, <laughs> some leaves coming out from my flowers just to make them look a little bit more complete. So I have the stem coming out and then I'm going to grab some of my paint and draw some, paint some of the leaves coming out from behind the flower. I'm going to dab in a dark bit of my paint, just using the wet in wet technique, dabbing in some darker paint up the top to add some depth and variety. I should have left some white space between those leaves and I'm going to have to actually mix up some more of my paint. Hoping for the best that it will be a similar colour. So adding in some darker paint. I'm actually going to go over the top of that stem. And they're quite big leaves on these flowers as well. 